Why is he? You don't salute me. Officers do nothing all day. It's bad for morale. It's better you walk like a man. Set an example. Hmm? Corporal, the Geneva Convention says that officers don't. <laughs> Geneva Convention, Article 2, prisoners of war in... <clears throat> the Geneva Convention... This is not Geneva. Article 2... This is the... Japan! I'll volunteer. You can't order an officer to work, but I'll volunteer. Volunteer. That's good. Yes. You may all volunteer. As long as Louis has enough time where he's really looking yeah. at him, yeah. so we can cut to a point of view. We get the low of Louis. Yeah, well, the Simon get that. I'm and these guys quickly go there. Yeah. And get told to like walk it over. It's been really, really challenging because I've never done anything like this. And thank God I have Roger and just everybody here is such an amazing team to help me understand everything from the visual effects to the scale and the size of the sets to the rigs and the stunts to the sharks and the planes and the raft work and the water work and all of it. It's just all going around around you and you're just trying to hold on to the flak has, once the flak starts to go, that's affected the plane. So. Left engines are both gone. The Green Hornet crash, the primary shot was, of course, the one where the plane hits the water. And because three people did survive, it couldn't just hit nose in. It had to do a little bit of a skip. And then the, we had the choreography of the water coming in first through the bombardier bubble, then through the cockpit, then up through the bomb bay. Um, so all of it needed to kind of choreograph and, and work as a unit. We have to get the guys knocked around by the water, and then we have to get Louis trapped in the plane, get dragged down underwater, fight his way out. When the plane crashes, we used air cannons that were sort of spraying water. It wasn't a lot of water, actually, but it looked like a lot. We're actually trying to stick to, as much as we can, what really happened uh, to Louis. The Green Hornet hitting the water at that speed, I don't know how anybody lived through it. But three of us did, and that was the beginning of our 47-day vacation. <laughs> our first two days were out in the sea, and it did give you a sense of the power of the thing around you, and was a really good base for the rest of the movie, that if you look in any direction, all you see is power, which is trying to get you off this tiny little raft you're on. Our first few days of shooting, they were probably my favorite adventure of trying to do that, but it was really, really, really hard to capture the performance. It's not for the faint of heart. The wind conditions were such that it made our days rather short at times. So we basically said we have to shoot on the, t the bulk of it on the tank, and you know most of that will be CG water extensions. The tank gave us the illusion of being on the open water with the convenience of being able to direct the actors to turn off the wave action to really allow Angie closer proximity to the actors for the performance, to direct them. Let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> but I think they got a good taste of being on the open water and that, I think, enhanced their performance. That's the 50 cal. Sounds pretty realistic. You know, on set, the 50 cal started going off and everybody talks about Hey, don't you want to cover your ears? And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm used to that. September of 2005, I was in Iraq fighting. Not too far removed from combat, you know? Into a fake combat situation is 
it's exciting and it's kind of like there's a bunch of emotions that come up, you know? Yeah, I'm excited to get cool. jerked around, get beat up a little bit. I think it helped the young men who were actors in the film knowing that amongst them were young men their age who had actually been to war and had seen combat. To have a, a guy that's been through the horrible stresses that he has, it adds, it can only add to what I what I bring and what we all bring to our characters. It got them to talking off set. They'd spend time and they'd learn from them and they'd ask them questions about war. So how long were you in the Army now? Army for two and a half, two and a half years. Air Force three and a half years. And, and I certainly learned from them as well and, and talk about, you know, what Louis' story ha has an effect on them. So kind of while he's now in the camp, he has his nightmares coming out of the I think everyone is bringing to the set their sensibility about, you know, what they're taught about the war and their attitude towards it. My grandfather was in the Navy in World War II, and he talked about it all the time. My grandfather was in the Second World War. My grandfather on my mother's side flew planes in the Pacific. Everyone has a story. Every guy has an individual story behind him. My name is Stephen Douglas, and I am playing my grandfather, Clarence Douglas. He was a technical sergeant on the Superman crew, and he was also a waste gunner, which was his position when they were actually going to battle. Clarence Douglas is the one that shot down the last hero, so Stephen Douglas was able to play his grandfather and do the exact same thing to, to recreate that heroic moment in his family's history as his grandfather. Over here, as soon as there is an enemy aircraft in the sky, get on the gun and stay on that gun and never put the gun down. Being approached to play a role in a major film and have it be so tied to my family, it's been a very interesting experience to see all of the research down to the finest details. It's been really great. We have a huge responsibility to kind of do justice to the story and to these individuals doing the research and getting in the plane and, and, you know, learning what it was all about in order to portray these characters, but with the respect you have for these these young gentlemen and what they went through. Yeah, I think what you were doing was so beautiful that you just, like, stay in your space of shock and just feel it. Yeah, Pillsbury, get him, boy, get him! 